I'm Shovel and welcome to my channel. Today we're back playing Choices. We're gonna start on the Freshman Book 2, the next chapter. We're gonna be playing chapter 5 and 6 of the Freshman Book 2 today. Also, if you hear any noises in the background or bells, uh, my cat's in the room playing, so that's why. Oh, whoops! The set's not lit up, guys. Make sure that's lit up next time. I'm alone. And last thing, we're just gonna throw on our reading glasses and we're ready to go! Also, I hope you can't see the... the the lint on my hello t-shirt, <laughs> but get one of your own at shovelhub.com. All right, so chapter five, stage kiss. On the opening night of James's play, you and Caitlin wait backstage as the curtain parts. Logan steps out to greet the audience. Good evening and welcome to Darling Manor. We do hope you'll enjoy your stay. I can't believe this. Logan's actually hitting his lines and I can barely enjoy the moment. Oh, poor Caitlin. She peeks out again at the second row where Arjun is seated. I, I, somebody told me it's Arjun. Arjun. I don't know if I'm saying it. I'm so sorry. I'm not ignorant. I'm trying. His family is super close with my parents, my extremely traditional parents. If word gets back to them that I'm, you know, up on stage making out with girls, I, I don't know what they'll do. I think you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself. Maybe we could just hug instead. A hug wouldn't give the same effect, but I also think it's not that big a deal if it's just, it's a stage kiss, it's for a play. I'm sure she can get out of it by explaining that, but it's also, I want to tell her to be herself, but it, it is scary. You can't hide who you are forever. I never said forever. I know I'm going to have to tell people back home eventually, but when I do, I want it to be on my own terms. All through high school, I dreamed of leaving home and all my insecurities behind me. I don't want to go back to the way things were. So, you can't kiss me, but you also can't not kiss me. I mean, honestly, though. I'm not sure. I guess I'll have to figure it out in the moment. Do you trust me? Ooh, you find Caitlin's hand in the dark and give it a gentle squeeze. Of course. Ooh! It's just a stage kiss. It's fine. It's for a play. She wanted to be the lead. She's breaking gender stereotypes. And I'm here for it. You and Caitlin queue up to go on stage and find James enraptured, staring out at the stage. Everything going okay out there? More than okay, this is, this is amazing! You peek past the curtain to see Chris and Sebastian in the midst of a crucial scene. Then we'll keep each other's secrets to the death. I wouldn't have it any other eyebrows. You and Caitlin wait with hushed anticipation for Chris to give you your cue. <gasps> Let us speak no more of this. The Lady Darling approaches, and that filthy stable boy along with her. My goodness, you honor us with your presence, Duke Eccleston. And Lord Rathbone as well. It's been an age since we hosted such nobility. Depends on your definition of nobility, I suppose. Wow, that was a rush. I haven't felt like that since the last game of the season. There's just something about being in front of an audience, I guess. You were adequate in rehearsals, but you absolutely came to life once you had a crowd before you. I didn't expect to say this, but we made quite a team. Quite a team indeed. Maybe you guys should put on a two-man show or something. Be friends. I don't really have friends, just associates. All right, then be associates. Get whatever, eyebrows. A half an hour later, you've reached the beginning of act two. Please tell me that's not what he's wearing on stage. Still upset that you're not playing a tree? I was at first, but I think it was a good idea to branch out. Out in the crowd, you spot Yasmin watching intently, her lips pursed thoughtfully. If Yasmin doesn't like the play, this is all for nothing. Hmm. It wouldn't mean nothing. You don't need her to be successful. Yeah, that would be a bummer. It wouldn't mean nothing. You got to put on a play. I'm sure she'll want to represent you. She loves the play, except my ending. I know, she's going to hate it. Well, it's kind of too late to change it now, right? James pulls out a crumpled page from his pocket. Wait, is that the new happy ending? Take a look. This is pretty good. And it's only a few different lines for a few characters. We can perform this. I suppose you're right. I honestly don't know. I'm too close to the work at this point. Don't ask me. It's been bouncing around my head for too long. I don't even know what's good anymore. Don't ask me. Listening in, some of the other actors waiting backstage run up to you. Did I just hear we're changing the ending? A bold move, Ashton. Is it true? I thought this was supposed to be a tragedy. I... He looks over at you, uncertainty in his eyes. Don't ask me. Oh, God, no. I want to tell him to change the ending to make Yasmin happy so long as it makes her happy, and I think the audience might be happy. 
But at the same time, I want him to stick to what he originally wrote because he's obviously prouder of that. We're going to try it. We're going to change the ending and make it happy. And hopefully everyone likes it. Everyone gather around. Time to learn some new lines. You take your places for the play's last scene. <gasps> I'm scared. Today we celebrate the joining of two great houses, the Darlings and the Rathbones. But before the ceremony begins, I must ask if anyone in the audience has any reason to object to this union. For a moment, silence fills the room. Then a single voice cries out, I object! On what grounds? That she doesn't love him. She... She loves me! Watch your tongue, stable boy. I'm liable to cut it out. Oh my god, eyebrows. Duke Eccleston, kindly throw this liar in the stocks so that we may proceed with this glorious occasion. Though his appearance is humble, I sense some truth behind his words. Tell me, Lady Darling, who is your true love? <gasps> it... It's William! You run toward Caitlin and throw your arms around her. <gasps> Zit! Eccleston, you swine! We had a deal! Not anymore. You gaze into Caitlin's eyes, your mouth slightly agape. I don't like that word. <laughs> what? What do we do now, Will? I'll admit I hadn't thought this far ahead. Perhaps a kiss would be a good place to start. For a moment, Caitlin hesitates. Then she leans forward and kisses you softly on the lip. Why does it always have to be softly on the Can't it just be a kiss? Can't we just... Relax. The theater fills with applause as the lights go down on the two of you standing together, holding each other close. The curtains close, leaving you and Caitlin in total darkness. Woo! Nice work, Caitlin! Look at that. He enjoyed his time. What do you think, Yasmin? Was I right about him or what? You were right. After he took my suggestion to change the ending, of course. Phew! You take your final bows as the crowd cheers. Thanks for coming, everyone. The crowd rises to their feet in a standing ovation. Yasmin notes the reaction with interest. Not a bad response. Oh, I wonder what would have happened if we didn't change the ending. Before you know it, the audience departs and the cast and crew assembles to say goodbye. That was truly the performance of a lifetime. I owe you all a great debt. I, I don't know how to thank you. A cast party would be a good place to start. Oh, ooh, what were we wearing? I kind of want to wear this. This is cute. I like that. I didn't have to pay for it, so <laughs> I'll take free clothes. As you leave the theater with your friends, Yasmin catches James's arm. Ashton, your play gave me a lot to think about. Hopefully in a good way. I'm still deciding. Talk soon. Ugh. With that, she turns and walks towards the parking lot, giving a little wave before getting in her car. Looks like I'll have to wait for my answer. What are you going to wear, James? Don't tell me you're showing up in that rumpled suit. What is rumpled? Rumpled! I guess I've had a few many sleepless nights. A change of clothes is probably in order. Makeovers? What? From time to time, you'll have the opportunity to unlock makeovers for your friends. Makeovers will grant your friend a unique outfit for the rest of the book and unlock exclusive story content. That means we have to pay for it. <laughs> Ooh. All right, we're going to give him a nice little sweater and undershirt. Oh, that was $30. Why can't he pay for his own clothes? As the party gets underway, you spot Chris hanging out with his friends. I never thought I'd say this, but your talent basically touched my soul. Come on, I wasn't that good. You were. Seriously, man, I couldn't take my eyes off you. To your horror, Becca strokes Sebastian's forearm and smiles up at him. I felt the same way about you, Sebastian. I tend to have that effect on people. They are perfect for each other. I think I'm gonna be sick. Spotting you, Chris walks over a big grin on his face. Hey, I wanted to say I thought you were amazing tonight. You and Caitlin, that kiss, I mean, wow. Well, Caitlin means a lot to me. It was just a stage kiss. I'd rather kiss you. I mean, I can't lie. I was hoping you'd say that. Chris takes your hand and pulls you close, pressing his lips against yours. There's a knock on the door. You open it to reveal... <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for Caitlyn. Caitlyn comes up behind you, looking startled. Hey, Arju Arjun. I'm so sorry. I uh, didn't realize you were coming here tonight. I wanted to catch you after the play, but I couldn't find you. So, what do you think of the play? You were both awesome. That kiss, man, it felt so real for a second I almost forgot it was you up there. As he walks into your suite and heads for the kitchen, Caitlin turns and whispers to you excitedly. Did you hear that? He was totally unfazed by the kiss. He doesn't know that I'm into girls. Now let's stop whispering and go join the party. This is my best friend, Shelby. She's pretty amazing. Amazing, huh? It's nice to meet you, Shelby. You too. Is this a new love interest? Because I don't need more. By the way, sorry if I seemed kind of freaked out when you showed up. I was just surprised to see you. Why didn't you tell me you were visiting? Oh yeah, about that. 
It's not just a visit. After sophomore year, I decided UT Austin was a little too close to home. So I'm transferring to Hartfeld. What? Uh-oh. What will Arjun transferring mean for Caitlin? Play the next chapter to find out. Good thing we're gonna. Chapter six, the cast party. Caitlin struggles to keep the shock off her face while Arjun discusses his recent transfer to Hartfeld. Yeah, I'm here to stay. Hartfeld has an amazing anthropology department and it's close to Northbridge. I figured it'd be a great fit. Yeah, that's, that's great. You look like I just told you my dog died. What? Oh, sorry. I'm glad you're coming to Hartfeld, really. I just didn't expect it, that's all. Sorry, guess I'm full of surprises tonight. Well, this just got a lot more difficult. Like she's been going around kissing girls this whole time anyway. You're not actually going to spend the whole year hiding the truth from him, right? Why not? That's what I did for basically all of middle school and high school. Caitlin sighs and runs her hands through her hair. I mean, part of me is happy he's going to be around because we are old friends. It's just we were never close enough for him to know that. Well, maybe it's time for him to know, because you should be able to be yourself around him. I think he might have a thing for you. I'd say she should be herself. Also, if she tells him that she just wants him to know and not anyone else, I'm sure he'd be fine with that. I don't know, Shelby. I'm just not ready. I'm so glad I can talk to you about this stuff, Shelby. It really... Just then, Tripp and Logan barrel into the kitchen and yank open your refrigerator door. Uh, what are you guys looking in our fridge? We need your spiciest salsa. Why exactly? I'm about to obliterate this fool in a salsa eating competition. I don't want to know. I'm the judge! Right, I think I see what's going on here. We'll give you three some... Just then, Trip snacks a jar off the top shelf of your refrigerator door. The lid flies off, splashing you with salsa. I just picked this cute outfit. You pull open your closet and look at your options. Let me guess, I'm gonna have to pay for something new. Hmm, it would be nice to dress up tonight. That's what I thought I did! Tutorial! Wearing something special to the party is a chance to look great and impress your love interests. I already have him locked down. I shouldn't have to impress him anymore. This is when the sweatpants come out. Ooh. Oh, literally a t-shirt and what I would imagine is sweatpants underneath. I would have rather kept on the clothes I was wearing, but which one's cheaper? Let's go for 20 diamond dress. We'll go for that. I actually like the red better anyway. Once you're cleaned up and changed, you head back into the living room where Caitlin and Arjun are talking and laughing on the couch. It's obvious that he likes you. Don't act like you don't notice it. <gasps> I, I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. I don't think it's as obvious as you seem to think. But what exactly do you expect me to do? I mean, saying that she's not interested wouldn't be a lie, because she's not. Look, if he says anything more definite, maybe I'll tell him then. For now, it's kind of nice having him back as a friend. Caitlin gets up from the couch and walks over to Arjun, who brightens up when he sees her. Guess I'd better make the rounds. You head up to the roof and find James sipping his drink and staring distractedly at the partygoers. Something on your mind? He turns to look at you and his eyes go wide. Wow, Shelby, that dress is beautiful. So why are you up here all alone? I'm just trying to figure it all out. What do you mean? Well, I never really considered that my play would make it to the stage, much less with a major literary agent in the audience. I mean, what if Yasmin doesn't offer me to represent me? What if she does and wants to make more script changes to adapt it for a film? What if I'm not ready for this? I think our play turned out great. You're an amazing writer or you're irresistible. He's a good writer. I appreciate the pep talk, but I'm not really... Oh my god, enough with the false modesty. Just admit you're talented. Back inside, you spot Chris and Darren laughing quietly in the corner and walk over to join them. You weren't wearing that before, were you? Yeah, had a little salsa incident. Chris presses his hands together and raises them up in the air. Thank you, salsa! So what were you guys laughing about just now? Why is she so nosy? See for yourself. He points to the hallway where Becca has Sebastian cornered. She twirls a piece of her hair around her finger and laughs prettily at something he just said. Yikes! Right? Chris claims it doesn't bother him. Why would it? <gasps> Is he bothered? Oh no. You used to date? She almost sucked out your soul? Or you ditched her from me? Because you used- I mean, they did date, kinda. Or did you totally forget about that? Or, no, I didn't forget exactly, it's just I never really considered it dating. And I think that's as far as this conversation goes. Sebastian strides over to the table with Becca in tow. He gives you all a dazzling smile before his gaze settles on Chris. Christopher, oh no. Just wanted to give my congratulations for your excellent work in James's little production. Uh, just Chris is fine. 
Your charisma and stage presence rival many thespians I have performed with. Which is why I think you'd make an excellent vice president for my upcoming student council campaign. Me? A VP? Why Chris, Sebastian? You barely know each other. You know, I find myself wondering the same thing. We've shared a stage. There is no greater bond. With my keen mind for politics and Chris's golden boy appeal, we're unstoppable. Well, that's certainly a tempting offer. Can I have a little time to think it over? Absolutely, but make it quick. I'll have to begin campaigning soon. Now, do you have any prior experience with political office? A turn on student council, perhaps. Where did you go to school before? Uh, Cherryfield High. It's in Maine. Don't worry, Chris. Your stint in the public school system won't affect our campaign, assuming we can find a way to spin it. Chris pushes back his chair and stands up. You know what? You can stop saying our campaign, because as of right now, you're officially running opposed. Whoa! What? You heard me. I don't need to be your poster boy. I'm running for president myself. There's a beat of silence and Sebastian starts laughing even louder than before. I accidentally skipped a part. Sebastian was making fun of him for going to public school, so that's why this just happened. Oh, that is truly hilarious. There's nothing funny about it. Ooh, that was a face. Sebastian, I think he's serious. Serious or not, there's no way he'd actually beat me. Just wait and see. You, Darren, Logan, and Chris glare at Becca and Sebastian. Sebastian gazes back with a placid smile on his face. What are we looking at? <laughs> Come on, Sebastian, let's get out of here. I have a sudden desire to be anywhere else. Let me just get my coat. That was tense. Darren claps Chris on the shoulder as he gets up. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just been kind of crazy lately. Yeah, I guess it has. So you're really going to do it? Run for president? You know, I think I am. Why not? I want to show people like Sebastian that I'm not just a jock. Think I got what it takes? <gasps> of course you do, baby. <laughs> hmm, totally, no question. Sebastian Prem seems pre- No, no. That guy's a jerk. Totally, no question. You'll wipe the floor with him. You make your way across the room to where Abby and Tyler stand against the wall. Tyler whispers something in her ear, and the corner of Abby's mouth quirks up in a smile. So they're still going good even after that bad date. Oh, sorry, am I interrupting? No, not at all. Tyler was telling me the mathematical probability of winning a game of Rage Cage. I don't know what that is, but I think it's something college kids do. <laughs> How are things going with you and Tyler? You guys are so cute, and you seem really happy. Tell me all about it. Don't leave anything out. I'm not sure how much there is to tell since we only recently started dating. But I really like Tyler and we're figuring it out together. But speaking of, how's your love life going? You mean me and- why would I- why? Stop. It's Chris. It's always Chris. Honestly, I'm not really sure. Things are definitely going better than they were before, but we haven't really talked about where things are going. Uh-oh. There is problems. So I guess we're not as official as I thought. That's not weird, is it? Is it weird? It's not weird at all, especially with the history between you two. But Chris is adorable, and I know he really cares about you. You guys make the cutest couple. That is, if you are a couple. Let me get back to you on that. <gasps> I thought we were Facebook official. You feel your pulse quicken, and you think back to your conversation with Abby. Chris, can we talk for a second? It's kind of... It's something kind of important. Looks like it's time for you and Chris to have the talk. <gasps> Will you define the relationship or leave things as they are? Find out next chapter! Oh no! Oh no! Oh god, I'm nervous. Oh my god, what if we're not Facebook official? What if it's complicated? What if he's not even on Facebook? Well, that's gonna be it for the Choices episode today. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching. Check out the Shovel Hub merch over at shovelhub.com. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!